Hello everybody and welcome to Why You Should Play Ring of Red. This was released by Konami for the PlayStation 2 back in 2000? Yeah, 2000. Uh, this is at its heart a turn-based strategy game featuring big stompy mechs and well because it's Japanese emo teenagers but mostly big stompy mechs. Uh, it's got a turn-based map section and a, a light action combat section as well but the meat of the game is mostly the way in which you position your forces and the risk reward choices you make on the battlefield. So why don't we just go ahead and, and jump straight into a mission in progress. Friendlies on this map are blue, enemies are orange, and this planning phase will be familiar to anyone who's played the likes of Shining Force or a Disguise or similar type of game. You need to not be outnumbered or overwhelmed while trying to isolate individual enemies to remove them from the map. And different types of mech that you can see there have their strengths and weaknesses in a rock, paper, scissors, massive artillery gun kind of way. Where this game differs from the other ones that I mentioned is in the actual combat phase of the proceedings. Whereas most games play out the combat with a simple animation and a, a, a rigid calculation of the damage caused, Ring of Red gives you control over the mechs and supporting soldiers themselves for what are simplistic battles to understand but like the best strategy hard situations to fully master. So we start here with a look at our frankly cool mech. Uh, they look cool. You know they do. Um, and then we go on to our, our supporting soldiers, uh, one of which here is demonstrating one of their supporting skills, which is hyper morale, and that ups their, their defences. Um, there's maybe 40 or 50 total supporting skills for our soldiers which need to be understood and mastered, and these can actually swing the battle in your favour. So, our troops have a couple of offensive uh, abilities as well, which are charged. Everything in this game is time based, so I've just brought my troops forward. They're going to use their offensive abilities now. Uh, my gun's ready to load, it's ready to fire, so I'm going to start focusing my fire on the enemy mech from my mech, or AFWs as this game calls them. One of my troops' offensive abilities here is cooperation, uh, which means that both troops fire in concertina against a particular enemy and causes uh, significant damage. And then the other one which charged at the same time is a smoke shot, which we're going to see here. This, this crew also had the, the morale effect. But they throw smoke grenades against the enemy mech and, and that's going to block their view of us. Uh, which is very important, as you're about to see, because this is how the aiming works. So you can see the, counter, you can see the clock counting down at the top of the screen. Um, Everything in this game is time based and it's a real risk reward. Now do I fire now at 65% chance hit me? See he's fired against me. He's hit me. And we saw that, that was a 60 I had a 65% chance to hit me. He hit me for minimal damage there. I originally had and that's dropped my percentage chance to hit. And I'm gonna have to wait now, I'm gonna have to wait and wait and wait until I get a decent chance to hit him. So I waited up until 70 and we fired that shot and we got a direct hit we had a decent chance against him. But that's what this game is. It's risk and reward. Now if I bring my soldiers back to the rear guard, they, they're at the rear guard at the back, uh, they are pretty much invulnerable back there with a, with a couple of exceptions against enemy skills. They can't be hurt back there, but any offensive damage from the enemy soldiers will go straight against my mech. But my soldiers are safe, but their offensive abilities will recharge. As we just saw there, they charged up again and I can send them out again. Uh, we'll get another focus or a combination shot and another smoke grenade against the enemy. He's shooting at me again. Your aim sucks is why he told me that. So I'm going to take to take a shot against him now. I'm going to have to wait for that percentage to rise and rise and rise. But all the time. The time is counting down. We're down to 8 seconds now, which we're going to come back to once our two offensive abilities here. So cooperation shot. Everybody shoots the enemy. Some nice screams in this game. Even the men sound like girls when they scream. So everybody there, they're running around. We're going to run in for another smoke shot because we brought them back in to allow that to recharge. So again, do we want to keep them out? and firing against the enemy, or do we want to bring them back, leave our mech exposed to the enemy fire? 
but again, if we bring them back, we get a chance to to rejig their uh, to rejig their special skills, which we can send them out to do. So I brought the time almost down to zero there, just to try and get that last shot away at the best possible percentage of fire that I could do, and that was worth doing because we managed to score a second hit. And again, this t this game is time based. We have a timer for each battle and that ran out, and so we're going to get our results here. Now, nobody got destroyed that turn, but we did much quantifiably better than they did. So there's another thing on the battle map. If you take over certain neutral villages, you will gain extra troops, is, is what we've managed to do here. The star there indicates that we've obtained soldiers, uh, and these soldiers are much better soldiers than the ones that we started with. And so it's worth doing that. The enemy there has gone, and he's rejuvenated, he can repair. So he was he was injured in a battle earlier and he's repaired. So we've jumped ahead again and, uh, and we're going to try a different type of mech here. I'm just checking, you can see the time. The time at the top right is the time that these uh, individual units will take their turn. And that becomes very important in the later game. That certain actions take you longer to recover from. You need to bear this in mind as well. It's, it's a very deep strategy game. Uh, and if the setting is something that interests you, and that's something we haven't talked about, the setting is actually very interesting. It occurs in a post-nuclear Japan um, after the Second World War, as opposed to the Americans just taking Japan. Uh, much like Berlin at the end of the Second World War, the Russians took half and made it communist, where the Americans took half, or occupied half, and made it democratic. Uh, we also have obviously these AFWs, these mechs. Which is an alternate future timeline, an alternate history thing, uh, and all this political side of it uh, plays out. And there's a lot of prejudice going on. One of our main characters is half German, half Japanese. He's constantly reminded of that fact by the, the so the more pure Japanese, if you like. And so again, we're entering another battle here. Another skill that, that our soldiers have. There's a flash shot which is much similar to a smoke grenade. Uh, it blinds the enemy and it lowers their accuracy when they're trying to fire at you. Um, and so again, it's all about balance. You have special skills as well. You can fire particular types of ammo. Uh, you can automatically reload very quickly which normally you'd have to wait for but again those opportunities are limited you have to decide on the best times to use those everything in this game is risk reward if I use it now I won't have it later if I take the shot now perhaps I'll get a second shot this shot might miss but I'll get I'll have time for a second shot or shall I wait shall I wait and get the bump the percentage chance of this shot up and up and up and almost take a certain hit but only get the one hit this time what's best for me, what's best overall. And then again you've got the overall map, which the overall map which you need you need to work out your strategy as to what you're doing in that map. And you need to send certain types of your mech against certain types of their bears and try not to be caught out of the other one. It's not a short game. There's many missions. Uh, I forget exactly how many now. Mission 3 is about the first mission where the hand-holding and the tutorials stop, which is the mission that we started here. Uh, I played through this again the other night and it took me an hour and a half. And that's the first real mission in the game where you're not, it's not solely tutorial. Um, so it's not a short game. Uh, it's a good looking game for a PS2 game. Uh, as I say, the strategy element of it is very, very good. If you enjoyed anything like Disgaea, Valkyria Chronicles, any of those sorts of games you will certainly find value in. Um, I really like it. I think it's one of the PlayStation 2's overlooked gems. I really do. Uh, and I think if you've got any interest in the genre or in the PS2 as a system, this is something that you missed out on. Missed. You should really hunt this down, load it up, sit down involve yourself in a big strategy session and that's why you should play Ring of Red.